Debbie. Hi, Yaron. Hey. So, um, first of all, I'd like to second that notion about enjoying the risk show and the show about money and these ones where you just take a topic and, and analyze it. I really enjoy those shows. So Good. I do too. Um, so we're all on the same, we're all on the same side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. So I, I actually encountered this morning, something that I consider to be good news about the culture. And so I thought I'd share that and see what you think if your perspective is, is similar to mine on that this is good news. And I encountered it, I'll warn you now, I encountered it in an article about the election. I am not calling to talk about politics. I'm just calling to talk about this other thing. So um, it was in a New York, New York Times article talking about why the Biden campaign should be worried. And some progressive, some progressives are concerned that Latinos are not going to vote uh, for Biden and that they may not vote at all. And that's in itself is not neither good nor bad, really, I guess. But but why I was just really I thought it was really great. So they said that these progressive pollsters, they've done 15 focus groups and a national survey. And and what the article said is progressives commonly categorize Latinos as people of color, no doubt, partly because progressive Latinos see the group that way and encourage others to do so as well. Um, yet in our survey, only one in four Hispanics saw themselves as people of color. And instead, they reject this designation. They prefer to see themselves as a group integrating into the American mainstream, one not overly bound by racial constraints, but instead able to get ahead through hard work. And I just thought that was wonderful, like that this big demographic group is, is saying, hey, we're not a tribe, we're Americans. Yeah. Quit treating us like a tribe. And yeah. I thought that was wonderful. I was pleasantly surprised by that. So curious what I you mean, think. I agree with you completely. And I, I think it's true. I've always said this. I, I, I find the Hispanics I meet, um, who, who, you know, uh, hardworking, they're ambitious, whether they're legal or illegally here, they, they, they want to make a living, they want to take care of their families, they're entrepreneurial, they start businesses, they, very few of them just want to be on welfare and, and, and not do anything, particularly first generation. I think, I think where the corruption happens is second and third generation, but there the corruption is not because they're Hispanics or not because they're immigrants, but the corruption happens because of our, our uh, educational system, our government schools. But I, I think that's absolutely true. That they, 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 because they're entrepreneurs, they tend to be pro, uh, more pro business. Um, and I think that I, I think that there's a reason they left. They leave their cultures. Partially, they leave their cultures because of opportunities. But think about if there's five million people in Guatemala, why do the these hundred thousand people leave and the, the rest stay? And it's because the people who leave are more ambitious, more independent, braver, more courageous. And these are exactly the kind of people you want in this country. And when you look at, and, and if you look at the way they vote, they don't vote as a block. They, they've, uh, you know, Jews and blacks are much more likely to vote as blocks than Hispanics. Uh, indeed, Hispanics like Cubans vote uh, Republican in Texas. Hispanics are much more likely to vote Republican than in California. And why? Because Republicans have treated Hispanics really, really, really badly in California. So my view is, and I've held this for years now, that the reason Hispanics vote for Democrats is not because they like Democrats. It's because Republicans treat them really badly. If you watch the debates and, and Republican after Republican after Republican describe how horrible, you know, uh, you know, immigrants from Mexico are, then guess what? The immigrants from Mexico are not going to like you because you've, you've shown immense disrespect towards them. Um, in places like Texas, where Republicans have, have treated uh, immigrants from Mexico and other Latin American countries with respect, they have gotten their votes. Uh, they tend to be, you know, unfortunately, they tend to be religious, but, but they tend to be conservative in their in their social views, they tend to be uh, pro uh, small business at least. You know, they tend, and they tend to assimilate. Every study I've seen shows that they assimilate just like previous generations of immigrants. There's no difference between Hispanic immigration and the immigration of Irish and Italians and, 
and Jews in the late 19th century, early 20th century in terms of their assimilation. And the only reason why in some cases it doesn't happen is because of our educational system, not because of anything to do with their culture. So uh, I find Republican attitude towards Hispanics to be truly horrific and truly awful. And if only they lightened up, uh, I think they would get a lot more of their votes. Uh, for whether that's good or bad is a different question, but I think they'd get a lot more of their votes. So, um, so I agree with you. I think it's a it's a good sign uh, that that maybe even some progressives are realizing that uh, they shouldn't treat everybody as groups. That these people are individuals, and they want to assimilate. They want to become Americans. Yeah, and, and the fact that they also, they're not interested in voting for Trump. They're just saying, well, we're probably just not going to vote. I mean, that's that's actually also encouraging. <laughs> yeah, but see, it is, I'm an advocate of not voting. But, but yes, it's, it's, but the other aspect of that is, it, you know, um, if you look at the, if you look at the numbers, Hispanics tend to not vote very much, even in past elections. So uh, turnout among uh, Hispanic immigrants, even uh, you know, citizens, tends to be low, um, and uh, so even those people who are, you know who, who want to stop immigration because the immigrants vote Democratic, it's just not true because they just don't vote very often. They don't vote much, uh, so they don't have. They're not a big force, uh, particularly particularly in presidential, maybe in local elections, but not in presidential elections. Yeah, well, maybe maybe they would vote if there were someone who was a better alternative? I, I, I still think that Americans, whatever, wherever they happen to come from, would respond to a better alternative. I, I still have yeah. that hope. <laughs> I hope I'm right. <laughs> but, but yes, maybe, maybe if we had, you know, not an objectivist candidate, but just a candidate who understood something about America and something about individualism and something about markets, I think that, I think... Americans would rally around a candidate like that. Unfortunately, not last election, not this election. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful for the future, but, but partially depends on what happens this election. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder. Please like the show. We've got 163 live listeners right now. Uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.